we're gonna do some retouching today. Um, first off is uh, this is a portrait I've done. I think it was just right before New Year's. And yeah, it's my friend Courtney, and uh, we purposely. I mean, I my my intentions were to shoot portraits like this to show for um, before and afters, and just showing my retouching process. Because um, I have some of my friends and some of the Facebook groups that I'm in ask me questions about you know, how I retouch my stuff and I can never keep track. It's just habit and just kind of, you're kind of like just reflex. It's just, I just go with it and then I never really, I never really keep track of the process that I do. It's just a mix of a bunch of everything. So <clears throat> I think I figured I'll, I'll start with this one. Um, I think I've done, I've done some videos before but I just kind of like sped up like about 10 times the speed. So it just kind of like, you know, just going and then I just add some music in there. But this time's going to be a little different. I will walk through, I mean, like walk you through everything as much as I could. And we're going to start, I think I'm going to start with the Lightroom as the camera raw. But people always ask about Lightroom questions as well. So I'm just going to put it on. Lightroom this time and I usually just use camera raw and take it to Photoshop and then that's it but uh, you know so today we're gonna do Lightroom so let me see so this is a raw file NEF file shot with a Nikon and um, shot this at ISO it's a little high I mean like you know it's not that high it's kind of like normal 400 200 millimeters 2.8 so a little shallow depth of, field, uh, depth of field and uh, I think it's still yeah it's pretty sharp um, that one's looking pretty sharp um, the light is underexposed you can see that the shadows there's some shadows there on the other side of the face and it's just it needs a little bit of work so that's why we're working on it all right so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just add a little bit of exposure right, right there Okay, I'm gonna bring the shadows up so I can see a little bit more details in our top. And then I'll just bring this black down, but not too far. So you can see that blue pops up when when the shadows gets too crushed in. Like see that one, uh, when the clipping show up, that means it's getting way too black. So we don't wanna do that. We just wanna leave some details as well. Just stick it down a little bit. And I'm gonna add a little bit of clarity, not too much, because I'm gonna add, um, I'm gonna add some contrast later on, but I don't really put too much in there. All right. And the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna put my lens information in there. So my lens corrections profile manual. So manual is if you want to do it yourself, but I just bring my my lens. Uh, what do you call that thing? A lens profile in there. Okay, so there. And then it brightens up. All right, so I'm gonna just bring back my normal lens vignette right there. And then for the distortion, depends on what I'm shooting, um, but when it comes to distortion, I always just go to zero right there for portraits. All right, and then the next thing is if you notice, there is a, if you notice the line here, oops, press the wrong one, right there. If you notice the line here, it's like, like distorted. You can see like, it's not straight. So I'm gonna try to straighten that because I, th I believe the camera was kind of too low. If you just look at the angle, the chin, the nose area, it looks like the camera is looking up a little bit, it's tilted up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to correct that. Uh, I believe when we were shooting, we, we talked a lot. So sometimes I couldn't really pay attention to everything. So I'm going to change. I'm going to make some changes here, the vertical. I'm going to just kind of raise that up a little bit just to make it a little straighter. 
All right, and then the horizontal tilt get things right there. All right, I won't take it too far, so it's not gonna look. I think some of that is from the distortion as well. All right, let me see where's that lens. Yeah, the distortion. There you go. I'm gonna straighten that. There we go. And then I'm just gonna rotate the crop so it's straight. There we go. And I'm gonna set my crop to four by five because this is for uh, social media. That basically where it's going. So I'm just gonna change that to the orientation to portrait, and I'm just gonna start my composition. So I'm not gonna add. I'm not gonna put the apple box in there. So I'm just gonna get this closer. Just about right there. Cool. That looks about right. Enter. So that's my crop. I put my lens correction in there. I'll put my, my adjustments for the exposures and everything. So the rest, I'm going to bring it to Photoshop. This is as, as far as I go with Lightroom, pretty much. All right. I'm going to right click, edit in Photoshop 24. There we go. So there's another shot that I was working on in there. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and make that bigger. All right, so basically from here, from here, the first thing that I'm gonna do is my layer structures. Uh, I'm kind of weird about that kind of stuff because I, I do like to keep my layers. So I'm just gonna make another layer, put it in a group. I'm gonna rename this retouching. So R-E-T, retouching. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do some basic cleanup, um, like these uh, lint. I mean, yeah, obviously we could have just used a lint roller, but you know, just it was fun just talking and shooting and talking and shooting. We didn't really have time for that stuff. So we're just going to use my. Oops, we're just going to do it in post. So I'm going to use my patch tool. Uh, J is the shortcut key for that. And then I'm just going to start going through it. I mean, you could do other tools here. This is like seriously completely up to you and how you want to remove this. So, but yeah, sometimes I'll just take my time um, doing this. Oops. Others also use, I think you could do dust and scratches with this one in Photoshop, but I don't really like dust and scratches because it just makes it sometimes it makes the texture looks weird. So I'd rather just do this and not I'm not really like rushing today. I'm just gonna do that. Take your time doing this. Sometimes this is kind of therapeutic too. <laughs> There we go. There. Normally, I think I'm gonna go, let's see. Excuse me, it's a little cold in here. Um, all right. Okay, so from the outfit, um, I think that's as far as it goes um, for me. Um, nothing's sticking out. It's the only things that I really take care of. The one that's like, really distracting. Like that one. So for this thread stuff, I'm going to use the uh, remove tool in Photoshop. Oops. Yeah, the remove tool. Just kind of follow the thread. There you go. And then... Okay. Let's start with correcting skin tone stuff. Our skin tones looks pretty good here. Um, maybe just this area, the dark circles and stuff. But that's that's pretty easy. Um, we're gonna start blemish removal. Um, okay, so this is tricky because I mean I don't know multiple retouchers that are like way skilled. <laughs> way more skilled than I am uh, always tell me like oh yeah just do a non-destructive one and this and that put another layer above it I'm like nah I don't want to do that so I just use my 
I just use my patch tool. All right, there you go. So I'm just gonna do this on the fly. Um, the reason why I have why I have this navigator on the bottom right is when I'm zoomed in like this, I can still see the bigger picture of the image. So it kind of keeps me on track. So sometimes when you're when you're almost like pixel peeping, you can't see the bigger picture. So I just still have that on there just to as like a guide. So obviously there's going to be some, um, so I think we just did this ourselves. I mean, like, I know we did this ourselves. We didn't have like a professional makeup artist or anything like that. We just, we just did this on the fly. We just like hit her up, ask her if she was available. And we did this plan to shoot. So we did that. So, all right. So I removed stuff that kind of looks like, um, kind of looks like a blemish or a scar or anything like that I remove those things anything that kind of distracts my eye like I don't think too much about it if I if I see something there that doesn't look right or whatever I remove it so also um, just for FYI I did ask her if it was cool to do this video and she said she was totally cool with that so yeah here we are. Sometimes I feel awkward, like showing people's like before and afters. I mean, I don't know, maybe maybe it's just me, but I kind of don't want to show that really. That's why it's like when people ask me, I always ask them like, hey, can you uh, just send me an image that you want me to retouch? Because I kind of don't want to do that to my clients or anybody really, but. You know, I figured this was going to be fun and I did ask for permission and like Courtney's really cool. So she was like, yeah, I'm totally on board. So here we are. All right. So I wasn't sure if that was something. I'm just going to take that out. So when you're doing your patch tools, just kind of go with the texture pattern. And so it won't be so like obvious. All right. All right, so I'm gonna zoom out. All right, so I'm gonna do before and after. So I didn't, I didn't disrupt it too much. I didn't change anything too much. Just basically doing things like this. All right, cool. All right, the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my plugin. I used to take a long time when I'm doing like. Uh, portraits like this like headshots I used to take a long time because I had to dodge and burn it manually oh, I'm gonna do like some high pass moves and all that stuff like frequency separation I don't really like frequency separation I only do it for wrinkles but for this one I just bought the plugin it's a retouch for me plugin and I also I think I only got I did the fabric heel portrait volumes but the only thing that I really use is the dodge and burn, and I, I love that feature. So I'll show you how it works. All right, so we're gonna click, select that. Also, I made another layer, by the way, uh, out here in the top. So um, how do I do that? Zoom, okay, here we go. This area right here. So there's like, a, I made another copy in there, okay? All right, so. Retouch for me is running. All right, cool. Let me make this bigger so you can see. So that's before and that's after. That's before and after. It looks so natural, guys. Like, this is awesome. I love this. I love this plugin so much. So, yes. So we're, this is almost like 90% done, really. After you do your, your, uh, your retouch for me, it does like all of the um, the dodge and burnings. Like it makes everything smoother and like much more. Like look at that. All the pores are still there. Everything is. All the details are there. Really. All right. So I'm not gonna do anything there. I'm not. You could you could go further if you want to, but too much I think is not good. So I'm just I'm gonna keep it there. So I'm gonna go and. 
this one is the soft layer um so all you have to do is just change that to soft layer and then you could go on and off that's before after before after all right so since i got everything right from there and then i'm gonna just do command option shift e on a mac so you can have a stamp so everything that you did from the bottom put them all in one layer and then that's it i'm gonna delete that because i don't need that anymore then now i just only have two layers now so before after before after so i always have my before and afters just so you can see if you went too far or you, you need to go further yeah all right so usually the next thing that i'm going to do is i'm going to clean up just a little bit on the the eyes down here so the dark circles so this is the part where i'm like okay i'm going to use frequency separation to do this or you could do another technique um i usually just jump in from i usually do frequency separation last like the absolute last because i just don't like it guys i don't know maybe i'm weird but i just don't like frequency separation so the first thing that i'm going to do is i'm just going to do a copy of that layer i'm going to change that to lighten mode uh i'm going to try to just do a clone on the top so i just did the lighten mode so it's just gonna copy the luminosity basically but change anything that is change anything that is dark to the brighter where you sample so this one and i changed the opacity to just 20 percent i'm gonna start there so i'm just gonna i'm just gonna gonna go copy what's there right there no, that doesn't look good. Um, like I said, when I said I do trial and error and I'm kind of all over the place when I'm retouching, I really meant it. <laughs> because I don't really have a set ways of doing things. I just go for it. So I just did that and I'm going to just change the opacity on that one so it's like brighter. Actually, we might actually end up you know what i'm going to delete that we're going to go with frequency separation so frequency separation um this guy on mesh from pix and perfect i love that guy he's absolutely amazing taught me a lot so it's a good he's a good resource too um for this one this is 8-bit i think let me see yes it's an 8-bit image so i'm going to use his 8-bit action like fs 8-bit all right, and this is how you use his actions, by the way. So if you're into that, all right, so it's going to stop you there. And then you're just going to move it until it starts to get a little blurry. As soon as the texture is gone, then that's where you kind of stop. So that 9.3. All right, so it puts it in a folder for you. This all the action now it's separated. There's low frequency and high frequency. So we're just gonna do the low frequency on this one because we're only gonna just do the tones. So low frequency is where the color information is and then the shades and everything. So, but all of the texture is in the high frequency. So you could actually see that color. So I'm just gonna turn that off because that is kind of distracting sometimes. All right. I'm going to use my clone tool. So instead of changing your opacity, I do the reverse uh, opacities back to 100%. And then your flow will come down about, we'll just do about 10%, right? So I'm going to sample from the bottom and I'm just going to, I'm just going to brush this area right here, just enough to kind of remove that area. It's too much. I think, I think 10% is too far. Just do about three. Maybe that will help. There you go. Three is good. You could also use your brush and sample here and change your flow to about five. You just do your brush too. And just copy from the closest area right there. And then you could also use your patch tool. You just kind of take that from the neighboring pixels. So 
this is why this thing is important guys because if you don't see the big picture So we're gonna go ahead and there. It looks rough. So I'm just gonna change the opacity to 50% right here. To turn on and off. Do the exact same thing to the other side. So you just take a sample here and then just brush. Take a sample here and then brush, just paint. Just painting it right there. Your, you can up your flow if you want, so I'm gonna go up to 10. Here. So I'm just gonna sample. Okay, I'm gonna do a sample there. Yeah. There we go. Alright, so you can go before and after, before and after. Perfect. Alright. <clears throat> So I can freehand this correction right here. So I could sample around here and then paint here. Uh, let's do the go to flow. Back to you know, uh, brush. Okay. All right, here we go. So I did the the darker the dark circles over there. And I could also just kind of go a bit further and it seems to be right. All right. Cool. And I still feel like it is still a little underexposed. So I'm going to try to, uh, let me try to fix that. So, all right. After I'm done with frequency separation. I really don't like that tool, but I mean, sometimes it helps. So. All right, just delete that. All right, so from here, I'm gonna start like kind of contouring um, just to bring out the highlights and where the shadow should be and all that stuff. So just kind of do that stuff. So I'm gonna make a copy here just in case I mess up. All right, so you know, I'm gonna select some of the areas here, like the eyes. Like right there. Change my flow there. There we go. There we go. And then I'm gonna use curves adjustments. I'm gonna brighten that. And then I'm gonna feather it just a little bit so it's not too crazy on and off. Uh, you can see on the navigator if you're gone too far from apart so that yeah so it's a little too far it's too bright uh well we'll see i'm just not going to delete that for now so i'm just gonna i'm, I'm not gonna merge it for now all right so i'm just gonna go turn my quick mask tool that's what i use for selection quick mask brush and then just make a selection right here. So I'm just gonna select where this general bright area is. I'm gonna use a small brush. Okay, just the bright areas. That one, and the nose down here. I'm just gonna do, uh, that one's already bright. So this one right here, I'm gonna just do this one right here. All right, and then just a little there, a little there, a little here. All right, so I'm gonna deselect, that's my selection. I'm gonna use curves one more time and I'm just gonna brighten this up a little bit, just like that. And I'm gonna break this apart. I'm gonna feather everything out. So there we go. Just gonna feather that out, feather it out a little bit more. All right, here we go. Turn it on and off. There, very subtle movements, very subtle movements. And then I'm gonna make another big selection, like right here, just right on the middle of the face. Just gonna do one dab there, or maybe two. There you go. 
and I'm gonna feather this really bad, uh, really big. So my feather would be about 50. Use another curves. I'm just gonna open this up a little bit, just like that. <laughs> I know some photographers now are just gonna be like, oh my God, it's cringy. Why didn't he just do that in the shot? I'm like, I didn't have time for that. We had fun shooting. We were laughing and I don't mind doing this in post. Plus, really. All right, here we go. Brighten that up. All right, cool. So we took care of all like the highlights area, and now I'm gonna bring back some of the the, the shadows in. So it's gonna be a little contrasty. All right. So after all of that, I've got three curves in the top. I'm just gonna merge it all together. So I'm just gonna do the way I merge is I don't ever command E it all the way down. I just do a stamp on the top, like right here. Command Option Shift E if you're working on a Mac for a PC. I don't know, just out of luck. I don't really use PCs anymore since like a very long time. I completely forgot how to do the shortcuts. All right, and I'm gonna go ahead and delete the ones at the bottom, down. All right, so that's before. No, that's before, and this is after. All right, so we're making progress. All right, so now it's time for the shadows. All right, so I'm gonna just use my I'm gonna use my brush again. I'm gonna turn my quick quick mask tool. By the way, quick mask tool. Um, it's it's this guy right here. Um, it is the uh, the button under the palette. So that's your quick mask. So when you hit Q, it goes out, and then when you when you oh sorry when you hit Q, it activates, and you know when it's activated because um, this one will show a highlight right here on the on the top so um the way i do it is just i set it as it is my uh it's i set it a double click there and then i make sure that it's selected areas that is um ticked all right not the uh not the masked areas Maybe some people like it when it's the mask areas, but I use it as select areas. All right. Okay. So make sure that that is selected areas. Hit OK. And now it's activated. So I'm just going to use a smaller soft brush. And I'm just going to kind of find the parts where I kind of need it to go a little darker. So I'm going to go around this area. Right there. And then a little bit in this area, right there. And I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do this area, just a little bit, a little bit that area, this area, and then maybe just a little bit there. There you go. All right. There's that, and I'm gonna select dark. Bring it down all the way, and I'm gonna break this apart. All right, so I'm just gonna go back this part. Um, that. Perfect. Before, after. Sometimes it gets a little too far, so you have to like kind of watch yourself doing this stuff. I think I've done it for so long that I just kind of started to get used to it. All right, so. Now, if you need to erase something and do it again, or just some areas just don't look right, you could either mask it or just delete it or erase it like this. So what I do is I usually mask it. So I'll just do it, put that in a group, and then I'll click this as a mask, and then I'll paint it with black. So it just, you know, kind of remove it. Like this one, it went too far. This one went a bit too far. Um, this one went too far. It's touching the bridge of the nose. There you go. All right. And this one went a bit too far as well. There we go. Okay, cool. So basically we just kind of shaped it um, before and after. Sometimes you'll see it and it's like, oh, yeah, just a bit much. So there we go. All right, that's done. I'm gonna merge it. I'm just gonna flatten it. 
stamp it in there. So okay, that's before and then after. We really gotten a long way, guys. All right. So at this point, I think we did pretty good there. So I usually zoom in and out. It helps a lot when you're zooming in and out because it kind of resets your eyes. I think I would say um, it definitely takes some time. It definitely takes some practice to see things if you've gone too far or, you know, but it helps when you zoom in and out. All right. So what I'm going to do is that it's still, there's still something that doesn't draw my, we still don't see eye to eye. I would say like when you're looking at the portrait, I want, I want the portrait to kind of look back at me. So it still doesn't draw my attention like right here in the middle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make another selection and make it really big, just right about the face size, turn it quick mask on right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to feather it about 45. All right. I'm going to select the, the I'm going to inverse the selection and I'm going to make it a little darker, just kind of like very, very little right about like right there so if you turn it on and off everything else kind of starts to close in but the face still stayed the same so i'll keep it right there perfect cool so i'll just merge it down that oh, shouldn't be a problem and then i'm going to brighten the eyes just a little bit just just a very ever so slightly so i'm just gonna select the whole eye like that curves just gonna open that up just a little bit there nah, that's too far half of that maybe okay and about 45 percent turn on and off there you go that's fine all right, cool. I mean, I'll love it. I love the shot. Um, I think, I think this is pretty good. All right. So the very last thing that I'm going to do, I know the shot is already sharp, but this file is also pretty big. It's like 12 by 15 inches. So when you think about it in social media, it's going to get tinier. So it could get sharper. It could help. A it could help if you just sharpen it a little bit. So the way I sharpen it is I use high pass right there. So I'm going to do filter. I'm going to do high pass. And then just about right when the detail starts to show, I believe it's always been kind of two. That's one. Let's do two pixels like right there. And then you're just going to do soft light. So you can see the difference. So it was like before, after, before, and after. So it actually just pops. All right. Cool. So it really also depends on kind of like what you feel like, how you want this to come up, like the finished product. I want to add a little bit of grain, like I said earlier. So usually the grain goes really last and that's on its own separate layer. So I'm going to just do another layer copy from that and I'm just going to name this green so I don't forget right there. I'm going to do filter noise, add noise, and then I'll go with about maybe 5% green Gaussian monochromatic. There you go. And then when you I'll zoom in and out, I think that is too much. That is a bit much right there. So I'm just going to change the opacity to maybe 50%, just half of that. You can zoom in a little bit. There you go. So adding noise is a trick when you're like, when you did some uh, blemish corrections, because sometimes you can't really, you can't keep track, especially that I don't use uh frequency separation so some textures may have been removed like so from this area right here it got a bit too soft so adding that noise right there kind of hides that in there so you can't really tell there you go most beauty shots that you see in like
the ad the noise like you can definitely see i'd be up there like nerding looking at looking at the shots while my wife shops so i'll just like look at pictures she's always like you're so creepy why are you doing that i'm like i don't know i can't help it <laughs> all right there's that white spot over there that's kind of bugging me so i'm gonna remove that green because i saw something that needs to be fixed right there and then i'm gonna make that again go ahead and do green if you want to repeat your filter like that noise so i'm just gonna do com command control f and that should do that it'll repeat the wait did i do that right <laughs> it should Oh man, why is it not doing it? What? Okay, you know what? Filter. Oh no, it's Command F. No, it's not. It should be Command Option F. <sighs> Sometimes Photoshop, I swear. There you go, I just added the noise. And that was about 50%. Here we go. Okay, cool. Um, I think I'm done with this shot. And then let me just, I want to just view it with the white background because, you know, in the platform, um, Facebook or Instagram they always have that white. So you want to see your photo against a white background as well. So you could see where it is from there. All right. So I guess that's good and I'm going to go ahead and save that. So we pulled this up from Lightroom. So this is a good part is that when you do command S or when you save your work, it's automatically going to be brought back to Lightroom. So when you go back to Lightroom, it's already there for you. So yeah, from here, that was your before that was before. And then that's your after this is your PSD file. You can see like there's a dash edit PST. And then right here is your .nef, which is like the raw file. Cool. Right there. All done. Ta-da. There you go. That's it for this specific one. So everything is like completely different. Like it's different every single portrait. So yeah, I think I'm pretty happy with that one. Cool. Well. It's been fun. I really enjoy this. That was the first time that I actually did this showing my face and doing a full portrait from like raw file to a finished one.